just create it don't consume it that's what i'm talking about is like people get so afraid of just picking up the tools that are in front of them but they can spend a half an hour on instagram just throwing scrolling with their thumb but they won't invest in themselves to like actually create content just create it don't consume it hey everybody welcome back to another episode of the pursuit of purpose my name is chris Kiefer, and today i am with the one and only tyler shear who has recently gone out on his own and uh, started a franchise of fulcrum home loans. Tell me if, if I'm saying this correct, uh, Tyler, but he's got a massive amount of experience in, uh, in mortgage and lending, but also we have a lot of interesting uh, overlaps in our experience with video. Even so that he did some cold calling and door-to-door -door sales. So uh, Tyler, thanks so much for coming on and, uh, and chatting today. No, I appreciate it, man. I'm looking forward to it. I think this is gonna be fun. Give me uh, like your 60 second, who is Tyler? I've always been an entrepreneur. I've always been one that likes to hustle, um, but I was obsessed with visual. So video and brands and logos has always been my jam. And I did that for nearly eight years before I became a lender. And I became a lender because I got back into the sell cycle where you can actually make some commission. And now that the market has shifted where we're going back into marketing and branding, it's cultivated my passion and my drive back to lining with both of them at the same time. Mm. And for those of you that are watching this on Spotify or on YouTube, you'll see that I, I think this is safe to say that Tyler probably has the sickest setup for audio and video of anyone that I've interviewed. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I was talking to Tyler yesterday, actually, just about you have you've invested quite a bit into the presentation, which kind of ties into what we're going to talk about today, which is personal branding. And um, I think that would be an interesting place to start is just how do you or why would you say when you're diving into making all this content? What's the significance or the importance or the justification that you made in your mind to go make your appearance in the video that you're creating look such like I have a high like quality of production. I, I think it comes down to I'm obsessed with reading. So I probably bust through an audio book or book uh, once or twice a month, like a different book. And it comes down to the basic core principles that Simon Sinek talks about. You got to know your why before you know your how. And branding starts that way. If social media is where you portray your brand, then people need to understand why they want to work with you or why your brand is so precious to them. And personal branding is very much like business. Uh, you can't just go sell, sell, sell. Um, you and I both talked about Gary Vaynerchuk yesterday where you really got to you know, jab, jab, right hook and you got to give, give, give. Um, and then you can ask for something. And one thing that I've found just personally is you know, building a photography business on social media and like all these type of things and then trying to be conformed and really refrained in the mortgage world, you can't share everything. Like you have to be very careful with how you share it, how you sell it. It's, it's caused me to really dig deep into my why and making sure that my personal brand portrays who I am. So with that said, I think there's four pillars to a brand. And sorry, before you get into that, you're saying what you you can't share everything. Is that a legal restriction in lending? Or are you saying that it's just not wise to share everything online? Is that or is it both? A little bit of both. So you have compliance, right? Where you can't over promise the moon, um, which makes sense. Like because in 2008 and nine, there was lots of lots of promises and not delivering. So they've definitely sh made it more restrictive, like Reg Z and all these other like guidelines that we have to fall within. But if you're really truly building a personal brand, it should be all about value anyways. And if you're not trying to bait and switch people, then you're going to be just fine. So you're or the you're saying or when you say it's all about value, I'm going to put this in my own words. You want to have your brand, Tyler, be known for, man, he just gives so much. Like every time I listen to Tyler or work with Tyler, I leave just getting so much value from that interaction. 
And that's, so that's like a principle. I don't know if that's one of your principles, but you're focused on how can I make sure people feel like they got a fantastic deal in this exchange? Yeah, because your, your personal brand, I mean, going forward, I think social media and things have opened up more, so many doors for me just by how I post and why I post that it sold myself without having to sell. And it all I'm doing is really posting like kind of my core four values, you know, of this is what I want my social media to look like. And maybe I'm doing it wrong. Maybe I'm not, but it's opened up doors for me and it's, you know, made cold calling when I'm calling like say real estate agents in my profession that they're like, oh, I recognize you did this. And I saw this on social media. So now all of a sudden that's not cold, that's warm. And it was strategically somewhat planned, but ultimately like what's cool though for you and I, Chris, is like our greatest calling in life is probably being husbands and dads. And I want my social media to be able to be portrayed that when my daughter picks up my social media account and goes, what was dad doing 10 years ago? She can see that I was giving value. I was being a teacher. And even like 20 years from now, I hope that it's my journal that, oh my gosh, I can't believe we went to Maui and made that like experience happen. And that's the power of social media. It can be the other way too, right? But why not be the light in social media? And that's kind of how I feel is when you give, give, give like that, and you think in the terms of what would I want to teach my kids right now through social media? That's awesome. So I asked you, why did you invest in this setup? And you went through these books that you've read, and then you're about to go into your pillars. I'm, I'm assuming that your pillars influenced your decision that you made or the decisions you made to invest in your appearance. So let's run through those pillars. Oh, uh, yeah. So uh you have your your why which i just kind of told you about was my family my wife you know my faith like i hope you can see that one pillar while you follow me that like that's a part of my language and then there's another pillar of entertainment and that's where this visual comes into play i'm obsessed i'm a sneakerhead i have over 100 pairs of nikes and i want you to like feel like i'm just like you i love golf i feel like I'm okay at golf, but I also struggle at golf. So there's a part of your personal brand that has to be entertaining and like likable. And that's just you being you. Like, it doesn't matter who you are. Like, for instance, knowing you, like you could be dancing on TikToks every once in a while. And all of a sudden, dude, this guy's like legit. He's like a cool father that just dances. Like, that's cool. <laughs> and then, then you got to have some like knowledge and value in there. Right. So that's where I think I'm obsessed with mindset, you know, the marketing side, teaching principles like that on how to be successful, things that have helped me be disciplined. Everybody spins out a million different ways. That's why there's a thousand books out there, but everybody's talking about the same thing and everybody needs a tribe. And then it comes to the fourth piece, which is how do I make money? And that's through mortgages. So I hope you can recognize that I'm actually a mortgage loan officer, you know, and I have products and services that can help you. But those four pillars, I feel like are wrap around all my content. And I could post one video and talk about all four of them at the same time. And it still wouldn't feel like it's fake or made up because that's me. And that's how I focus my personal brand on social media. And so that was family entertainment. The third one was just like mindset or knowledge. What, what are you giving that like experience? And then the last one is the, just acknowledging how do you make money? You're living. Yep. Yeah. And so like, I'd be curious the, in your past 10 years, whatever, however, what front time frame you want to go back to how have you applied like this? Is it always four principles? Do you encourage people pick that? Um, like if you're going to give me advice on setting up a framework to double down on my branding, my personal brand, I don't know if that's, what's the best way to tackle this, to provide value to everyone that's listening to this. Yeah. No, done those four. I think like with you, okay. You know, family means a lot to you. You could, you have topics about how to be a great husband. There's things that you could teach others about being a husband. Like I'm talking just about pillar number one. 
and you could talk about being a great dad making time for bedtime or whatever that is like those are things that are very relatable to other dads or fathers out there and you know you can choose how far you want to go with faith but i do believe that like showing that i'm a faithful man and believing in you know christ and god and like that there's a higher being means something and i i want to influence people and give them that light that's pillar number one and you have a lot of content there and then you go to pillar number two entertainment uh golf is easy for me check out this wicked cool golf trip that i just went on or look at the lesson that i learned from golf or man, golf is hard or show that kind of thing. Shoes. There's a story in shoes for me. Like every lace has a story. Every shoe that I have is like, I have shoes on when I meet people. I have shoes on when I have experiences. I I had shoes on when I had my first child. Like you don't think like that, but I do. So telling that story and teaching that, like that's entertaining to people because they're like, he's talking about shoes, but now all of a sudden he's telling a story. And that's really your story and is what you love. And then you go to like talking about, you know, I don't know, things that have made you successful, the discipline, the success, the fulfillment, the gratitude that you have, like that falls under knowledge, like for yourself. We talked yesterday and I think very big picture like and from the end, from the beginning, and you're really good at the process, like dialing in the details. So I like to comb everything with a big brush and paint that way. And you may be the guy that paints with like a little brush and shows like, hey, these are the little things that will help double your business or triple or 10x. And that's what all these books are for. You know, Alex Mosey, Grant Cardone, all these guys have these books out there. They have little core little principles. And I love the big picture. And there's guys like you that love the little like, hey, this little trick worked. Right. It's funny that you that that's what you picked up because I have said and my business coach I've told for the longest time, I hate details. I can do <laughs> it, but it is absolutely excruciating. Like it is the I think I showed you like a process map. It took like nine months to make, you know. It wasn't like a like, hey, I'm bored, I want to sit down and map out the process, but it was just like I knew that it would help. And I also I have to be honest the team of people that I have hired, I'm holding them accountable to define processes because I do think that, uh, in general, I'm, I have a very, i I love the new shiny thing. So I'm notorious for like, Hey, check out this cool thing or this new widget. And then you talk to me next week and I'm like, Oh, that old thing. Yeah. Like, you know, whatever. And I'm on to the next thing. But there's so much more value that could have been extracted if I stuck with things longer. Um, but there's a balance. I, I again, I, I'm just saying that it feels good to have someone say it appears, Chris, that you like the details, because I'm like, okay, I've been trying to force myself into the details because I know that there is value in structuring things. But in general, that is not my natural. My natural inclination is to just dream up new crazy ideas. And then if someone presses me too hard on it, I'm like, I don't know. Let's let's just talk about something else shiny and new and different so that I can just, you know, continue to be on the edge of innovation and whatnot. But actually rippling or like sticking with something to implement a hundred percent, that last like the last twenty percent of an implementation is like painful for me because I'm just like like, don't you get the idea? I think we're we're good enough. Let's just go to the next thing. And it's like, no, pushing it across the finish line. Sometimes that's where all the value is, you know. I'm the exact same way. Uh, but I think what's what's so unique about what you just talked about is when we talk about personal brand, you sharing that fight or that inner battle is your brand. And people don't realize telling the story and letting people come along with the journey as part of your story and your brand like you're a hundred percent right like the things that i've been successful at i've actually taken time and like done the hard thing to figure out how to scale this or how to like pick this apart or how to apply pressure so that i can figure this out and like i'm the exact same way the last five percent of anything is so freaking hard like i can tell you right now this office that i'm in 
I hung the two French doors and it's 95% done. Like the, the molding is not all the way done just because ah, it's good enough. You know, but I think that's what's cool about that section or that pillar is you learning those disciplines for success and being grateful for who you are is the story and is the brand. But we forget to grab the phone or we forget to like share that. Like if if Bezos would have freaking made a podcast back in the day when he was ripping through Amazon or Steve Jobs, think of the knowledge and the example we'd have by some of the greatest that have ever created stuff. Give or take what you think politics and all that crap, but just what they like, how they influenced and impacted people. If they had the ability to go, Hey, Chris, you want to jump on a podcast? Let's talk for like 30, 40 minutes about the stuff that like, like, I'm like squirreling out in my head right now. That's like been so cool. And I'm just so amped about like, we don't have that from them, but we have it from athletes. Like we always seem to have like the story of like, you know, Olympic players or, you know, athletes going and winning championships. And that's it was documented story. throughout the process. Yeah. And like you and I are similar ages. And I've thought about this. How do I teach the younger generation to go through things that I didn't go through? Like, I don't that want you did or didn't? I don't want them to go fail like I did multiple times. Like, how can I teach them? Like, hey, this is what worked for me. These are some frameworks. This is some systems that I went through. And yeah, I'm struggling to get the last 5%. So who, not how, or something to that effect. Yeah, I think that, uh, I, I guess part of my, I wonder with like Jeff Bezos, I, I feel like that's another Gary V thing that I've heard about. He's all like, he's like, just wait until I buy the New York Jets. And then you can go back and literally see my first wine library TV video. And it's like, what uh, the, the journey of that man. I do think that personal branding or podcasting or content creation takes a lot of energy and time and thought. And so where's the balance in your opinion of building the thing, building the empire and talking about building the empire and how much energy should you put into each? It goes back to when you think about social media being a journal, there's things every single day that you learned from that day. And if you're not, then you're not growing. So if you, I just, I just personally, before I hopped on this podcast with you, I ripped out my phone and uh, on the way back in my truck, I made a video. It's 90 seconds just talking about the thing that's on my mind right now about how do I influence millennials to make more income because there's a growing issue of just like not making enough to afford a home. That's what I'm talking about is like people get so afraid of just picking up the tools that are in front of them, but they can spend a half an hour on Instagram just throwing, scrolling with their thumb, but they won't invest in themselves to like actually create content. Just create it. Don't consume it. Like already today, ask yourself, how many times have you went like this? Uh, I had 20 minutes this morning where I was like, you know, just was, it's like, how did I even get there? And I was like, what the hell am I doing? I got a meeting before I met with you. I had a client meeting and I was like, crap. Like I just burned 20 minutes that I could have got caught up on email or maybe more actually better. I should have gotten uh, more strategy laid out for the next steps of what I need to do to finish the course that I'm working on. Yeah, but totally. Just a, it's a that instinctual habit that we all hate doing, but we all do. That's what's funny about content creation. Like, obviously, you and I have been in the video sphere for over a decade, right? Like, we've nerded out on camera equipment, all that stuff. Like, it's obvious that I nerd out on that stuff. I mean, I have stuff, <laughs> stuff. But it comes down to time, and I actually carry this little guy on my desk, and I will, like, set timers for myself to create something. So I try to live in 100-minute sections of my day where I'm cold calling for 100 minutes or I'm going to content create on Tuesday for 100 minutes and just show up. If you didn't prepare, just show up and just go. Like, I think a lot of times we... We fail because we just don't do the thing. And that's sometimes just grabbing your phone. And so being the smart Alec that I am, 
even though I'm all about this fancy stuff, I'm going to do 100 videos in 100 days of me just grabbing my phone with no mic, no nothing, and just show people that I can still get the exact same views of really fancy stuff and show that it's, it's not this. It's the content. It's the story. It's what you're actually telling or portraying. So, yeah, yes, I would say I definitely agree that it's like repetition over the perfection or the quality. But I would say that something I've been thinking about is the uh, there is some level of like the I, mean, I guess the example I'm thinking of is there is a consulting company that I was debating working with. And uh, I got on with it was the the owner is like a YouTuber. And then he's got a series of other like coaches that you can work with. So it's very difficult to work with that consultant. And one of his, the consultants that I, I didn't even have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with him, but I was in a webinar that he was teaching to, you know, 15, 20 other people. And he was in his bedroom, which is his desk, you know, and the bed is behind him. It's not made. There's like clothes on it. And he's saying that he's like, he's got five or six kids and he lives in this small, like over the course of several uh, sessions, I had like picked up these little snippets about him. And it's like, I admire the hustle. I respect that he's a dad and he's like got a little corner office in his bedroom and he's trying to grind it out and everything. But I was like, there is, it matters what your presentation looks like. Like even right now, as I'm looking at that, I'm like, there's like a roll of uh, um, a paper towel roll behind me because I was working on a engineering project with my kids yesterday. And uh, it's like, how often do you have stuff in the background that you're that you don't think about, but someone sees in there, they look at that and they're like, hmm, that's interesting. And like that, uh, whatever is behind you tells someone about your organization, your level of success i almost feel like it it talks a little bit about your mind you know like how clear is this person thinking and then i also feel like the production quality like if like right now you have this fantastic setup people naturally assume tyler must know what he's talking about or he must have been doing this for a while or whatever because he has a setup that looks very good you know what i mean so where do you think the balance is of like would you tell someone, first of all, just like start producing content, get in the habit and then invest in the tools, but I, I think do invest levels. in the tools? Yeah, I think there's levels and we'll always like uh, in the door to door space, right? Like I, I would, was not the greatest salesman on the doors because I'm honestly just like my mind goes too fast for just being knocking, knocking, knocking. But I then got into the marketing and video side and building like the training platform for door to door. Um, basically the guy behind the camera and it's easy to get caught up in exactly what you're talking about. And I think there's levels to it. If, if they're going back to Bezos, if he would have just like grabbed his phone on the way out of Amazon and just said, Holy crap, I just hired like 200 employees today. Like this was nuts. We don't care where the background is. We don't even care. Like we want to hear the story. So it comes down to like some principles that are also in click funnels by Russell Branson and you know, your hook, your story, and then your offer. And that's what you're hitting on. What you're talking about is, yeah, the hook is like, hopefully I got a cool hair, beard, cool shoes, whatever, like that stuff just like kind of sells itself simultaneously. You can see behind me, I'm got my picture of my wife, uh, some shoes and logo and all that like that's cool like that that helps you know build that up but the the hook hopefully is just me with personal brand and the way you carry yourself into a room i mean you and i are both tall if we come in slouched we automatically like lost the hook or like the vibe and then it comes back to the story or the content you're creating. Like you really do got to like give them value. You got to give in that story. You got to make them feel like they're just like you. Um, I don't know your income. I don't know your bank account, but I feel like, man, I can really, really relate to you because you are trying to build a business just like I am. 
and still be balanced with family. And that battle is every day, every hour. And like that sense of relatable, like just relating to you is huge. And then what do I offer for you? Like, what do you offer for me? And that goes back to like, we just gave, gave, gave. We haven't even asked for anything in personal branding. And like, what's the offer? Like, I hope I can give you some content ideas. I hope I can like help you get the juices flowing on how to create more content, build a brand. But at the end of the day, I like enjoy being around you because that's what I get is because I gave to you. And we miss that art somewhere along the lines. And that sells 101, really. <laughs> yeah, there. that's interesting. I think that um, personal or branding, well, actually, that makes me just think we should, I should have started this conversation with what do you define as personal brand? Like, what is it that we're even talking about? What is the scope or the sandbox of personal brand? And I think it's a different answer for everybody. For me, I, I, I've always been known for matching my shoes with my, my clothes or my shoes match my hat. Cool. I guess I could be a part of one aspect of personal brand, but if you go and ask like my, my closest friends, they'll say Tyler picks up the phone and he'll be the guy that you want to talk to because he just listens and then he just gives some thought. I have core five friends that I've leaned on for five plus well, nearly a decade, really. We've been through thick and thin dating, marriage, kids, building businesses, failing, all that stuff. We'd like, there's a core five in my life that I feel are my mentors, my friends, and my cheerleaders. And I think personal brand really comes down to what do you want to portray? What do you want to tell your story? And who do you want to be? And that's why I've think the four pillars work for me is because it narrows it down to this is how I'm going to sell myself as passive on social media or this is I guess so that's myself. I agree with that but I would say when I'm or as far as defining personal brand my I'm thinking like not for Tyler but if you were to say a personal brand is what like for anybody is it like because what I I think what I would say would be it's it's what like if you were to ask a random person on the street, hey, do you know Tyler? Like have you have you come across Tyler before? Assuming they had, like tell me about Tyler and whatever that person says. And then you do that with a hundred people, and you take the sum of that. That is your personal brand, right? And so the question is, how do you affect people's the way, how do you affect the way that people describe you to other people? I don't, I think that's one way that I would define personal brand. Does that make sense? Or am I saying that in the right way? Like ultimately that's what you're, you can say like my personal brand is family, knowledge, entertainment, whatever. But, and I, I should say, you're saying that's the framework to think about what your personal brand is. But when you have that, I would then say, what I want to know is if I went and asked those five people that you're talking to, what are those five people going to say about Tyler and how similar is it that the things that they say and whatever those, you know, bullet pointed list is of what they said, that's what Tyler's personal brand is. And now the hope is that what they said is close to what you say about yourself. Right. Does that make sense? Oh, it does. No. And I, and I think like it makes you wonder cause it used to be reputation, right? Like that's growing up. That's what our parents would call, Hey, what's mm. your reputation or what's your character? But now we're living in this like phenomenon of like personal branding on social media. Like you got to tell your story. You got to do all like, we're all living that we're all caught up in that like kind of noise. But at the end of the day, it comes down to social media can be also be a house of cards. So can you be real with your brand? and real with yourself because what you're talking about is a hundred percent how I think about, I hope people see that in me that like I'm real, that I'm like genuine, that I'm like have some honesty and some integrity. And, you know, I respect different people and everything. Right. And personal branding too, you got to get out there and take a risk because there's some things I'm pretty passionate about and I'm bold to say that. And maybe, 
maybe you can play it safe most of the time, right? With personal brand or social media, and then you're not that way, I don't know, behind the scenes. But no, that's a really good thought. What is personal branding? Personal branding, I would say the way in which you go about your personal brand. What is personal brand? I would say, I like, I had heard that before, but I do think ultimately it's just a modern, modern day reputation. What do people think of you? But it is interesting to, uh, it actually brings up thought of self-awareness. Like how important would you say self-awareness is when it comes to your personal brand? I think you got to reevaluate all the time. I mean, I do. I mean, just because I'm, it's easier for me to have a talent of pumping out content doesn't mean I don't think. Like, I'm always thinking of how can I give more. Um, I, I don't want to flex on social media. I don't want my brand to be flexy or loud or inappropriate. Like, you know, I, as I, I always go back and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. But I really want my social media and my brand to portray what I want my daughters to be told in like 10 to 15 years. When they pick up a, when they pick up a phone and social media, I want to be the example of like, hey, post stuff like this, not like that. You know, tell your story this way, not like that. And, you know, I'm, I'm involved with the youth in my church. And you, you think about just the demands that they have of having a phone in their hand for as much as they do throughout the day. I don't know about you, but I grew up without a phone. I didn't have a phone until I was really in my 20s. And uh, how can you teach them that that is a tool, not a weapon? And I don't know we're talking social media now, but like, how do I make sure that like, I'm an example and a great light of like, Hey, do this instead of, you know, being negative and always pointing out things. I guess I would, yeah, I, I agree with that. And I think that the, like the difference between a tool and a weapon, I would say is discipline and how you let use it. Right. Do you have the, the personal discipline, and the willpower to do the right thing, even if it's harder. Um, and potentially, as I'm saying that, I would say it also comes down to having a North Star. I can't remember where I heard this, but I feel like at some, some point I'd heard, you need to have like your goals and your vision so well defined that you don't even have to think about what to do because it's so like it's obvious what you're going to do today. I think that when you, when I struggle and waste time on social media or I'm a consumer, it's in the days where I am unclear on why, why am I doing anything? What am I after? What am I pursuing right now? And if I get dialed in on my, you know, 90 day goal or whatever, in order to have a good 90 day goal, you got to have a good vision for the year. In order to have a good vision for the year, you got to know where you're going to be in five years. And if you get that defined and then you build out the milestones, I think it gets easier to wake up and be like, oh, I'm clearly I'm going to work on a course today. Like that's, that's the number one thing instead of letting, you know, the day dictate what I do, which is truthfully what I do most of like, I probably have 5% of my days where they are as good as what I just described. And 95% right now are like, I show up and then see what I'm going to do, which is not optimal. And I'm realizing that in this conversation, like, hmm, that's interesting. I should probably do that. Yep. But like, um, as we're, as we've already kind of defined personal brand, like, do you share that thought on social media? Like, is that too vulnerable? Is someone else out there thinking the exact same thing? Um, I don't know about you, but I followed Casey Neistat for a long time. Dude is straight up the quirkiest dude I've ever followed in my life. Like, he is not, like, a beautiful creature, but he is because of how he tells a story. And he's so good at portraying it. And he's got a video background of, like, telling story. And, like, it. I've followed him for years. And all he was doing is just showing something, one story a day, and one, one habit that I've 
really grow like really try to develop with my little girl that's three is after we say our prayers we tell a story and we tell the story about what happened that day and it shows us a sense of gratitude and um it's it's made me realize like as i go through like everybody does this if you've got google photos for the last 15 years of your life of everything that's been taken in your iphone or whatever android you sadly have you know you you can look at all these photos right and every time you scroll back what happens smile oh my gosh i remember that the power of images and power of video like that that's that's your story like and how much do you share with the world with that it's totally up to you there's some things i've definitely pulled back on i used to post a lot about my wife because she's a freaking rock star and i used to post a lot about my kids but now as my instagram has actually grown more than just my family and friends it's like ah, i don't really want to let you in on all that like <laughs> You know, like I'll be selective with that because that's too powerful or that's too like good for me. So I'll be, cl I'll be, I don't know, I'll keep that tender mercy to myself a little bit, right? And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I should give a little bit more of that, but I also want to protect my family, right? Because that's my ultimate goal. But when it comes down to it, I, I think you've already hit on it. Like discipline creates success. If we're gratitude, if we're grateful for what we have, that also creates success. But being grateful for what we have makes us realize we had discipline. And those three things like really drive everything, business, family, relationship. That's awesome. Well, for the last couple questions, um, question I ask everybody, what are your three book recommendations for people listening? It doesn't have to be on personal brand. It could be about whatever could be your most recommended books, could be the last three books you read. But what do you got for us? Think and Grow Rich will teach you how to think about the end from the beginning. Um, I read it every year, once a year. The next one is 10x, not 2x. 10x is it'll, easier than 2x? Yeah. It will, it will, it'll break down your time and make you think about who you need to put into your process or what you need to do to go 10 X. And then the third one is the alchemist because I love a good story that teaches principles or parables along the way. Ooh, the alchemist was the first book that I downloaded on audible. It was like, it, it was the, uh, the, like, what's the word? The guy that like plays scar. It's his voice, right? On yours? Ooh, actually, that's interesting. I don't. I'd have to go back and look at or like think about that. I, only know that I haven't listened to it in a while. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I I could be. What's the guy's name? Do you have any idea? No. You just think the voice actor is the same one? Yeah, I think so. Because it. I mean, The Alchemist is so good. Um, I should go back and listen to that one again. And then the last question I have for you is, what is your favorite movie? Greatest game ever played. Greatest game ever played. Francis, we met was an amateur golfer his dad did not approve of him playing golf and there's a scene in that movie where he ends up winning the u.s open and his dad gives him money uh disney made it but it's a true story and he gets his dad's approval after defying his dad or going up beyond uh what his dad thought he was capable of um, ah, but it's interesting. a wicked cool golf story. The greatest game ever played. It looks like Shia LaBeouf is in it. Yeah, back when he was cool. <laughs> back in the day. Um, it's also, <laughs> yeah, The I don't know if I've shared this with you, but I have a, with movies in particular, I always look up uh, the IMDb ratings. And 7.3 is my cutoff for like an acceptable, like I'll watch a movie if it's above a 7.3. If it's below 7.3, I, I will not watch it unless the person that's recommending it wants to use their mulligan because I give everybody one mulligan in life. And you can use your mulligan on a sub-7.3 recommendation. Luckily for you, the greatest game ever played is 7.4. So that gets added straight to the watch list and you don't even have to use your mulligan. Dude, um, that's, that's a wicked rule, man. You need to write that one out. See, you should be sharing that. 
That's good. Well, so the over time, <laughs> like I want you to think about this. Try to think of a movie that you think can break my uh, uh, little rule, right? Because everyone hears that and they're like, that's stupid. You just, like literally, if I came up with any movie, it's a below a seven point three. You're not going to watch it. I'm like, no, unless you want to use your mulligan. But it's very hard to find a movie that you genuinely like that is below a seven point three. Like, I would, I would love for you to be like, hey, I love this movie, and it's below a seven point three. Try to find one because it's hard to do. The only caveat is that you can't do it with comedies. Comedies are like. If you think about it, like I could think something is hilarious and someone else thinks it's the most offensive thing ever. So comedies are frequently like just four, five, six. So comedies are, they just don't work on the scale. But any other movie, uh, you can you can put it through that filter and try to find a movie that you like that's below 7.3. It's very hard to do. But it's also fun to find those movies like this one I'm excited about because everybody knows the top, you know, the top movies ever, The Dark Knight or whatever, but we've all seen those. And then there's thousands of movies to watch and you have to have some filter to just decide I'm not going to waste my time. And I have yet to watch a movie that's above a 7.3 that I felt like was a waste of time. So there you go. I I love that, but what's hard, you coming, both of us coming from the video realm, is I can watch... In like a cinematic type way of like wow that, those shots are cool that like uh there was like a recent war movie where they continuously shot the whole thing like no cuts and it was just like you watch the whole thing and like the story was like eh, but like the way they filmed it was like oh my gosh so i appreciated that but i'm a sucker for good stories man like i ball like every time like music hits that like they win it's like yeah and then you see like this little like teary-eyed going on over here so so are you saying that you think what you bring up that war movie because you think it would not be a good rating but the cinematography was good yeah i think it was like 18 17 or something like that yeah because there's i would say um i'm looking up uh or 1917 is that what you're talking about yeah 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 1917 8.2 yes yeah, so um because it was like crazy well filmed like it was nuts yeah but that's what i'm saying is that like you text me if you can come up with a movie that you like that was below 7.3 let me know and we'll talk about it um it's oh, it's Challenge really hard stuff. to do Challenge yeah it's stuff. really hard to do <laughs> And the heart, like people can be like, oh, I found one. Like, you actually like this movie? And they're like, eh. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't like that movie. You wouldn't tell your wife and your friends to sit down and watch this movie with you. Um, anyways, Tyler, it's been super fun. Thank you for taking the time to come on today and uh, talk about personal branding. It's been great getting to know you over the last couple months and look forward to uh, lots more conversations. Well, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you for your attention and listening to this episode of The Pursuit of Purpose. Your feedback and comments mean the world to me. If you liked what you heard, please take a second, leave me a five-star review on iTunes. If you've got suggestions for future episodes or just want to say hi, shoot me an email at chris at chriskiefer.com. Don't forget, I make it a point to include all the links to the books, movies, and resources mentioned on this episode in the show notes. You can see those directly below in the description or on my website, chriskiefer.com. Thanks so much, guys.